Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well, whether it's the morning, afternoon, or night from wherever you're viewing this. My name is Danny Lay. I am a librarian here at the Santa Clara City Library, and we have an exciting talk with uh, Mosaic America, a nonprofit organization that strengthens communities, cultivating belonging, and catalyzes inclusion through intercultural and co created art. Uh, their team of artists use inspiration from their cultures and art forms to collaborate on unique performances and expressions that highlight the common thread of our shared American story. Uh, we're excited to speak with uh, Priya Daz and Farima Berenji, uh, both who will, uh, as organizers, as well as, as performers, who will be at the Mosaic America uh, Mosaic Festival this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Um, I just want to jump in and thank you both for you know taking the time to talk to us today on the cusp of the Mosaic Festival that's happening this weekend at the Her Mexican Heritage Plaza at the S uh, School of Arts and Culture in the east side of San Jose. So Priya, can you briefly tell us about Mosaic America, how it came to be your involvement in the growth of the mission in the last few years? Oh, absolutely. That's my favorite topic uh, <laughs> for the last now six years. Um, I do want to say, though, that uh, Farima Berenji is a partner uh, to Mosaic uh, America through her uh, dance organization called Samorg Dance Collective. And I'm sure you have questions for her and I'll have her explain, uh, you know, her mission and vision mm -hmm. uh, and how we have partnered over the years. But coming back to Mosaic America, well, you know, it all started with, you know, I with Usha, the other co-founder and I being immigrants and our immigrant experience, right? And it all kind of sort of came to a head um, in 2015. So, you know, as immigrants, uh, we were always kind of, you know, in between two worlds, right? There is the origin country that we come from, and then this is the country that we call home. But the, there is always this feeling or a lack of feeling at home, right? In your home country. And in our journey as immigrants, um, you know, and especially in 2015, when there was a national rhetoric of divisiveness that was going on, we suddenly kind of were, it came to grips with the fact that it's not just us who are not feeling at home. There are many others who have lived here, perhaps for even generations, who are seeing the, you know, landscape and political and society climate change in a rapid way. And, and we realized that, you know, it, it's not just us. It's, and if, you, if you take our neighborhood, for example, right? There are people who've come in new, there are people who've stayed here for, lived here for generations, right? So the neighborhood is changing for everybody, right? It's the new people who don't know much of the history. The, the people who've been here for years and generations who know the history, but, and yet they are also seeing the neighborhood change. And so we said, you know, let's, let's is there a way that we could get communities together um, in a very non-divisive, inclusive way, right? And growing up in India, we sort of had this vision of, you know, because of the 5,000 years of history and various invasions and uh, a, a lot of complications um, to, to the masses and that, you know, that lived in India, we were kind of exposed growing up to a very wonderful diversity, right? So in one square mile, of living in, 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 I come from Bombay. So in one square mile of Bombay, you'll have like four different religions, 50 languages and associated cuisine and mannerisms and lifestyles, right? And, in, and growing up in that kind of a world, you kind of, you don't feel othered at all because everybody, you never get asked the question, are you really Indian, mm -hmm. right? Which you, you know, some of, us, some of us have been asked the question, you know, go back to your country or, you know, you know are you really American? Where do you really come from, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we said, you know, how do we, growing up in that world, we do have a vision of how diversity and all of us can mingle, uh, you know, be, celebrate our differences as well as come together as one, uh, you know, community, right? And so we said, you know, how is, how can we make that vision come true? And, 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 you know, so we started talking to libraries and we started talking to museums and we said, you know, we want to do this multicultural programming. And one of the reactions that we got was, you know, libraries would say, oh, but we are multi multicultural too. We have Diwali for our Indian Americans and Medea de los Muertos for our Mexican Americans. And I'm like, and we're like, no, no, that's not the kind of multiculturalism we're talking about, right? We want to be more, which is why we use in our, 
description of our organization, we say intercultural, right? Because we really believe that all of these groups do need to come together and create the shared vision of our present and on how our future could look. So our programs typically will work, we'll work with, you know, <coughs> hang on. <coughs> take, take your sip, it's all good. You're, you're heating it up. <laughs> <clears throat> no idea where that came from, <clears throat> allergies. So any mosaic event will have, you know, at least, uh, you know, anywhere from two to, if you're talking about the festival, like 35 different cultures that have made their home in Silicon Valley. And right, you know, and our, our mission always is to kind of include more and more groups in any expression that they choose to share, right? So it could be arts, it could be performing arts, it could be visual arts, it could be quilt making, it could be thread work, it could be any art um, that the community feels like is an asset to them that they want to share with the rest of the bigger community. It could be uh, vending, it could be crafts, it could be workshop, it could be engagement. And frequently in, in, in our events, you'll find that, you know, where, as the art, especially if it's dancing or singing is being presented, we'll frequently ask the audience to join in. Dance alongs and engagement with the diversity is huge for us, right? So we have 6 million people living in Silicon Valley that speak over 150 languages. And it, it's all we wanna do is create in every event of ours, a vision of how these 6 million people that speak over 150 languages and associated cultures can come together as one community, right? And that is the vision that we have, not just for Silicon Valley, not just for San Jose, not just for Santa Clara County, but for all of America, right? That's why we are called Mosaic America. I mean, I could go on and on, but that's at, at the crux of it, that is our mission. And because it started with a vision of how America could be. You know, uh, and thank you for that because uh, what I've grown to uh, love about Mosaic America and uh, the other, your other name uh, before changing into to this, the work that I've seen grow as also as a person who works in the community, uh, your ability to bridge uh, and, and, and welcome uh, intercultural exchanges in either music or dance and to create new works of art. And that's the most important thing, I think, in terms of how we communicate with one another, in whether it's our ethnic background as well as community, a community that wants to learn, is that uh, movement and uh, music and language, whether it's poetry, uh, literature, uh, uh, speaks to the heart. And uh, in, in those uh, uh, way, creative ways of, uh, of uh, speaking and language, uh, we all learn each other, whether we understand it or not, right? Uh, and that's the that's beautiful. I'm, I mean, I don't understand too much Spanish, or uh, you know, or even other forms of uh, Asian or South Asian language. But I said I can understand rhythm. And when I saw some of the collaborative work that Mosaic America was able to do uh, from last year's festival as well as the previous projects, uh, I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, especially the combination. I I think it was. Uh, a mes Mexican folkloric dancing or uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, what was it? Uh, with the Indian folk dance, yes. Yeah, and I thought that was so ingenious and so amazing because yeah. I, I, get, I grew up with both separately, but to see that together in an exchange, that was amazing. And I think that's what's important for what your mm -hmm. organization does as for what it, it intends for people to witness. Yes. So uh, that's amazing. Um, now, uh, to segue into uh, Freema, uh, you know, you're a, you're a dance ethnologist, uh, a scholar, uh, you know, world traveler, and, you know, you've done so much, uh, you know, sharing your, uh, <laughs> your work with the world. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't graze over your uh, bio, but, uh, you know, no, you've no. worked so long to uh, connect with your family, uh, culture, you're a third generation uh, artist in your yes. family. Yes. I think I, I'm jealous because I wish I got passed on uh, those kind of culture, culture expressions for my family. But uh, it's amazing that you're able to do, take your grandmother's and your mother's art form and live through that. You know, mm -hmm. so um, my question is, so with your creative work and your scholarly work to help, you know, identify, and connect and contrast different cultural expressions from around the world. Um, what do you think when you see and have done your studies? are some of the identifiers that many cultures 
uh, in our region, whether it's here in the Bay Area or around the world, share when it comes to the creative arts? What are those factors that you say, oh, that's similar to this and this? Yeah. And hmm. I think, um, well, hello first. <laughs> nice, nice to see everybody here. And um, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a beautiful question. Um, actually, like, uh, you know, connecting with Piria, what Piria has said, you know, I too also have the same background, you know, an immigrant and and come from a from a place where it's ancient, like almost, you know, like like India, which is 5000 years old. And like she says, you know, I would walk, you know, an hour like you drive an hour away and it's completely different culture, different food, different customs, different language, different religion, yet we were all called the same. Um, so it was it was beautiful to see that. But I think um, as you say, you know, language is uh, dance and music and art is older than language. It's it's uh, you do not have to understand language, a spoken word. You don't have to say anything, but you understand a dance. You understand music. You don't even have to understand a, a, a poetry. The feeling of it, you understand. Um, so it's it's older than uh, it's older than language it's older than anything and so that is so beautiful and when we look deep into that we really start to understand my god we all came from one place and we used to do the same thing and the only reason it changed it's because maybe a little bit of the climates or maybe a little bit of uh, custom changes but at the end it was all the same if you look deep into a tradition of dance uh, they were all, we all came from performing circle dances, which with circle dances were all about de devotion, de well, about sacredness, about, about worshiping a certain element or a divine. Our colors all represented the same colors. Um, the purpose was the same purpose. So at the end, it was the same thing that we were doing. And it was only really politics and religion that separated us. Before that, it was, we all did the same dance we all did the same music everything everybody and everybody in every culture they all have a drum and every culture they're all turning and every culture there is music there is rhythm there is movement so you there's no way you can take that away from any culture or any country because they all have it so they all came we all had that and one of the beauty is when you spoke about Mexican folklore, um, I wanted to actually mention that it's really beautiful because you have an Indian culture where you have uh, skirts that have ribbons on it. And then you have the Mexican folklore that has ribbons on it. And then we have our folk dance that have wearing black skirts and have ribbons on it. And so you look into that, you're like, my goodness, there's something there that you have all these different ancient civilization, countries that have no idea who they are, yet they're wearing the same same skirt, same design skirt, same color. So there is something in there. We all somehow exchange our ideas, our culture, our customs together. Um, we were just, unfortunately, with newer society got separated, but the dance is the same. So that's the beauty of it. And, and that's what mosaic art is trying to um, show here, that at the end, um, we have to not look at language, not look at the skin color, not look at where you come from, look at the costumes, look at the dance, look at the music, look at the rhythm, everything's the same. We did the same thing and we're still doing the same thing. Yes, and we come from a shared past. Yes. And yeah. we want to move everybody to a shared future, right? And part of the reason, you know, it's, it's so problematic in, or it's a challenge in Silicon Valley is because all of us either are new or are finding that Silicon, you know, our neighborhoods are changing, or we want to move away, right? It's kind of always had this transient uh, nature of, of, uh, of, of living here, right? And so we want to kind of impress upon everybody that we live in the most progressive country, right? In the most innovative place on earth. And so let us show the world how an innovative society can thrive, right? And we have so much going for us. We have all of the diversity, right? And, and so instead of being hesitant about the diversity, let's engage with it, right? Going back to both your points. Oh, did you have anything else to say for you? No, I'm good. All right. Um, Thank you. Um, it's interesting because that's uh, it leads into my next question. Uh, you know, for myself, I grew up in the Bay Area in the late 80s and the 90s. And 
um, when we talk about uh, sharing our ethnic uh, uh, customs and culture, usually that's always, as I remember, like in high school or middle school, it was always relegated to a, a day like, you know, oh, it's your culture day, you know, and that's when, you know, everybody gets to break out their, uh, their cultural costumes and music and dance, but it's left, it always, I always remember it is, uh, it was only that one day that one time and you get to see in that one moment, only one point of view, uh, which made it so separate. You know, I, ne I didn't find uh -huh. that we were all together on that. And so, you know, I, I ate that up as a young kid. So that, you know, that framed my way of thinking how multicultural, uh, you know, congregation looked like. And now um, through Mosaic America and so many other, you know, uh, movements to, uh, sh you know, be proud of, especially the young generation. Um, that's my, basically my question is that I am seeing this new generation of youth embrace their culture in amazing ways where, of course, they're taking uh, their influences in street culture and, you know, hip hop and, you know, more urban uh, 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 Environment, uh, music, right? But they're combining it in the movement, and it's still so much them. But mm -hmm. and the truth is, it's them, this generation's version of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, my question to you, Priya and Farima, are: What are some ways have you seen the next generation kind of step up and sh to share their culture uh, with the world? And what is different about it than the way you grew up, uh, kind of expressing it, or maybe similar? Um, oh, definitely the 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 younger generation, like you said, right, uh, Danny. And I have two teenagers at home, right. Uh, and what I see is that um, they're unafraid, right. And that comes that somewhat comes with youth, right. Uh, I I remember when I was a youth, you know, some part of what I do at Mosaic America is fueled by the idealism that I kind of kept tamped down uh, that I felt in my youth, right? Um, and right now in, in, in the current, uh, you know, the current, the current generation, <laughs> the youth, um, they, don't, they don't necessarily feel the need to tamp down on their enthusiasm for anything, right? Or, or their opinions about how to mingle, how to, or have an opinion. Right, so that I feel like is, is different from how I grew up uh, and I didn't grow up uh, in the US, right? But there was always this awareness of, hey, if you make your opinion, A, you have to be given space. Youth were never given space, first of all, right? When I was growing up, we had to wait our turn, right? Uh, there was all, you know, and, 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 and then you had to kind of frame your opinion or voice it in a way that was considered acceptable. Right, and I don't see that um, in the youth of today. And I'm sure that when we, you know when we were young ourselves, the older generation kind of felt that about us. And I think that's the best part about having this continuum, uh, you know, this cross generational continuum is that you know there is always one element that is looking outward, mm -hmm. and then there is one that's sort of looking inward, right? And then you kind of need both. Um, and, you know, and, and the way it kind of fits in beautifully or the way we are able to tap into that at Mosaic is because we are kind of, at Mosaic, we always feel like, you know, the, the basis of our programming is that none of us, no, no, no race, no ethnicity, no color of skin should feel that they have to shed any part of their history, identity or culture to be considered American, right? And we're saying, you know, let us be unafraid. Let us talk. Let us examine all of this, right? And see how it is that we can we can make space for each other and create this inclusive society. And that, from the get go, is a definition of youth, mm -hmm. right? They 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 don't, you know, we are taught that we belong to a label, right? Every one of us. Nobody is born with having this great awareness that I am X, Y, or Z. Right. And we're taught that. So in the first 15, 20, even 25 years of our life, we are taught that, oh, you belong to this label. You are this hyphenated creature. You are this, you know, this, this, this and that. Right. Um, and, you know, all of us kind of fall into that same trap. Right. Because we immediately want to label because that's that's one way of trying to grasp our realities, right? But what happens is just like you were kind of, you, you figured out for yourself in the, you know, you had that one day where you could come out and be yourself, 
right? And what we're trying to do and what the youth is trying to do is be ourselves the whole time, our whole selves the whole time, right? And, and that comes so easily when you're young, right? There is not any, you're not, you're not built with any of those kind of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, curtains, you know, that you have to kind of draw or undraw or, you know, withdraw uh, ever, right? So it, that's, you know, it's, it's wonderful to kind of uh, have that. And at, at some point we had started a youth ambassador program where we were encouraging high school students to kind of start a mosaic program uh, as part of the clubs at school because you know they feel in you know, the youth feel everything very keenly right they feel unfairness injustice uh, and the joy right uh, very keenly and they have opinions which we should all kind of embrace anyway so that's where <laughs> that's what i feel about youth and our mission and how it's wonderful to kind of have that collective energy cross generational energy M amazing answer that was great <laughs> that was that was great for you <laughs> for real very nice Rima, how about you? Well, you know, um, I also, I, you know, I grew up in, in a family of artists. And, um, but one of the beauty was that, uh, you know, in, in our culture, there was a sense of saving your culture and being proud of it. And, and one thing that I noticed with the new generation, and I don't see it with, and I don't see it with the new generation, I see it with the old generation. I grew up in a place where, we had stories, there was always stories, there was always um, a place of fantasy we would go through, you know, they would take us into this world that was just um, in a, like a like a magical world. And, you know, the, uh, the, the elders would share their lifestyles with us, their culture with us, their dancing with us, their, their story, you know, their folk t stories with us. And unfortunately, we've lost that. In the new generation, there is there is no time for the, uh, the the youth and the grandparents sitting down talking about folk tales and dances and where do we come from. There is not connection. The connection has lost, unfortunately, and is everything is a high tech connection. Yes, you can go and go on YouTube and see documentaries and see this, but that person to person contact we lost, and a lot of you know the traditions that we have the dances that we have the music that we have has been always been passed down through oral tradition mm -hmm. it was always oral it was never written down um we didn't have something and if it was it was destroyed by invaders and yes. you know libraries were destroyed and books like we see today they're being they banned the books and so the political changes and war destroyed books written stuff and so everything was always been told to us through um, words, through mouth and mouth. And so what happened is we were able to save our dances and our music through that, through oral tradition. And it was through the stories that we saved it. And, you know, we have dances that dates for 5,000, 6,000 years old, and it was only saved because it was passed down through stories. And Nowadays, we see it's dying because nobody is talking about them. Nobody is getting together and, and talking about these stories and dances and traditions. And I think it's very important because um, the new generation, uh, yes, they know where they come from, but they, they don't know their history. They don't know their own history. And when you're, when you're not proud of your history and, and you lose that art, you lose a civilization, you, you lose a sense of pride, and then you lose whatever you have. And so if you save it, if you save your art, if you save your oral traditions, if you save your history by, by bringing it into the arts and showing it every day, whether it's through music, dance, and you be able to do it then you save your, your part of your history and we have to show we have to teach that to the youth um, because if we don't then we lose a 5,000 year old tradition and so one thing again what mosaic is trying to do is trying to say it's like you said it's not a one-day thing don't just come out and say okay this is my dance is finished no you have to we have to teach them to be able to be proud mm -hmm. of their past but also be able to embrace the new okay you came from this land but you live in this land bring both together save it be able to bring this new this old tradition into the new land and save it and show it to others and it's very important that we do that and something we've done in the in, in our time but it needs to continue it shouldn't be um, broken and um, unfortunately we see that being broken so we have to have 
uh, organizations like Mosaic to be able to save it. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, for you, you kind of you picked on this one thread of the story, which that is why we kind of feel cut off, right? All of us, right? Because we kind of lose, we know, we sense it, we sense, mm -hmm. you know, that we're losing some part of ourselves, right? And so part of, you know, how we do, uh, how Mosaic works is we work with wherever people gather, right? It could be at a community center, it could be a library, it could be a museum, it could be a theater, it could be the intersection of two roads, it could be, you know, somebody's home, right? Um, wherever people gather is where we want to kind of bring that programming to because A, you know, one of the artists that I was, we work with said of something very beautiful. She said, you know, the youth of today don't feel safe to talk about their history or their culture. And this was an indigenous person. And, you know, that has stayed with me because, you know, yes, you know, because that's, you know, fear or not feeling safe is something that all of us have felt about some part of ourselves in, in at some point in our life, right? And, you know, part of what we're talking here today is to kind of see how we, as a self-determining society, there need to be enough of us to stand up and do something about it. And that's all it takes, right? That's the beauty of being here in, in America, right? There just needs to be enough of us to stand up together and do something about it. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we have a question by uh, one of our audience members, and I think it leads into what we're talking about of visibility and exposure and how we, we spread ourselves into the mainstream to be more comfortable, hopefully fight that fear. Uh, Malta B. Lee says, do you think that the increase in visibility and representation of different cultures and people on TV shows and Hollywood has helped the younger generation embrace their diversity more openly? E.g. Minnie uh, Kaling's I ha Never Have I Ever is centered on a second generation American Indian and her experiences on which is the first for me. So um, this goes into, I mean, say organizations like uh, Mosaic America, but also I guess them in mainstream television. I'm, uh, you know, I definitely seen in the last decade, there's been an increase in whether it's been pushed by Hollywood for ratings or what have you, but there has been more shows of yes. persons of color. Uh, yes. I think it's amazing. Not all of them are great, but I was like, oh, yes. you know, I can't be, can I be? We're good with that little greatness yeah, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Farima, do you want to take that question first? Um, wanna... Sure. I mean, like uh, you know, like you said, it's it's not at all great. I mean, some of them uh, are culturally incorrect. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, some Hollywood movies, I can't sit through. I can't sit through it. I'm like, I said, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but. But it's good that they're bringing it up, even just a little bit, even just a tiny bit is going to change something uh, which we didn't have before. So this diversity and and social media and movies and TVs, it's it's really helpful because more and more people who have no clue of, of a certain culture, um, you know, whether whether they're presenting it in a right or wrong way, they'll still be eager to find out. They'll still be eager to say, Oh, that sounds interesting. I wonder what they eat. I wonder what how they dress. I wonder, you know, I'll Google it and see what country they're talking about. So even just a tiny bit of that um, helps. Um, and, you know, I've had many, like when I performed, I had many people that had no idea, like, for example, what I would do, but they came to see the show because they saw certain, you know, Prince of Persia, they saw Prince of Persia and they're like, oh, well, we saw that movie, Prince of Persia. And we came to your show because they had the name Persia in it. So it was like, okay, I mean, it's not the same, but okay, <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> you know? yes. But still, it it helps. Even even the name helps, whether it's good or bad. Um, it, it does give people the chance to do a little bit of research. And, and we're always eager to learn. People in general, we are always eager to find out what's going on. And so um, those who want to learn will go after it and search for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I totally agree with uh, all of what Farima said and all of what you said, Danny, that, you know, it's not, um, rep but, you know, the, the, at the base of it all, you know, to go back to the comment that was made, representation is the start. You have to have representation, right? And yes, some of it, 
Hollywood gets wrong, right? It's incorrect <laughs> representation, which is why authentic representation is a big deal for Mosaic America. Right? We will never go to a culture and say, hey, you have five minutes and you know you can operate only in 50% light and you know you get this kind of stage and you have only you know a 12 by 12, you know, you have to wear only certain colors. We're like, no, that that, that stops the conversation right there, right? Because that's not represent authentic representation. Mm -hmm. So representation is definitely the start and it has to be authentic. And that is the start of a conversation. Uh, but the, and there is something to be said for the mass appeal, right? So one of my dreams, personal dreams is to have the Mosaic America message and vision uh, come to everybody in the medium of their choice, in the language of their choice. Right, I want Mosaic America to be a household name, and you know, being in the movies definitely is going to help with that, right? Um, but to back to Farima's point, right? Um, they are, you know, the, even the fact that oh my God, this person can look so different and speak so different and have so such a different take on anything, right? X, Y, and Z. Even that is a start, right? To kind of uh, acknowledging the diversity and that people are different and yet they're the same, right? And, and the fact that these, uh, the mainstream, so-called mainstream media kind of take it into, you know, as personal a device as a phone it, it is definitely moving the needle, yeah. Thank you for the question. Thank you for those answers. Um, it's, uh, it's an amazing time. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'll honestly say it's still weird to me that how rapidly, uh, you know, social media or any of these techn technologies will be able to broadcast anything around the world almost in instantly. Um, but that's also to the advantage of how uh, we're talking about connecting. I mean, I grew up, remember uh, having the phone cards, having to see my mom call Vietnam, <laughs> you know, praying that the minutes don't run out. Uh, and it, you know, but now it's like, video you know on wi-fi i thought that was amazing video conferencing and talking in the instant i'm like this is crazy but this is now becoming a new norm to a lot of uh, uh communities and uh people so being able to i guess embrace whatever uh opportunities we can take even if they're not great shows on tv we latch on and as to farima's point we'll We'll uh, if somebody re uh, you know contacts us based on that you know misaligned kind of representation, we'll hear the educate and show yes. you know and maybe course correct it right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, Danny, if you can, if you you know indulge me a little bit, I do want to talk about uh, Farima and uh, how her, her how her group Simo Dance uh, Collective and what they're doing at the festival because that kind of you know kind of sums up a, a lot of things, right? So. First of all, Farima and her group are going to be, you know, visible five times across the two days, right? <laughs> <laughs> so on Friday, Ooh, yes. really? <laughs> I don't know if you you were even aware of that, Farima. She's like, no, yes, but I'm, I'm good with that. I'm always, surprise. Farima always surprises me. Yes, she's always surprises me. The, I, I'm not going to be surprised if she calls me the night before. <laughs> By the way, you're going to be doing this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so on Friday, right? Uh, so, you know, what I like to, you know, what I like to, how the way I think about immigrant culture and kind of going back to all of the points that we've made so far is we have a secret life, right? All of us actually, forget about immigrants, but all of us were immigrants at some point, right? In this country, except for the indigenous um, and, and people who were brought here forcibly against civil, right? Um, but we all have secret lives, right? And we all have secret dancing lives, right? And so if you kind of get in, come into a, you know, a largely, a gathering of largely Indian origin people, you'll find them dancing to Bollywood music, right? But then when you turn on the radio, it's, it, you know, it's, that's a different, it's a top 40, um, right? Music, or you go to your company dance parties, a different kind of, so I wanted on Friday of this festival, right? In three days, I wanted to bring all of these secret lives of ours out into in, into the into the into the larger society and community right and so we build it as the block party and the, the, the reason you're calling it the block party is because it is the our neighbors you know it, it this is the music that all of us and our neighbors listen to and dance to right and so farima is going to be part of the she's bringing a, the iranian pop uh element to this block party Right. And, and it's a funny story. I, let, me, let me give me 30 more seconds. It's, it's interesting how I came to know. And it kind of connects back to what we were talking about. 
I thought of using having Iranian pop as part of the block party because I was watching some uh, uh, Tehran, which is a series on Netflix. And I'm like, and then this character just put on some music in his car. And I'm like, that is dynamite. I want that music, <laughs> right? And obviously there is a large Persian Iranian population uh, origin, uh, you know, community here. And I'm like, wouldn't they love it if they heard this music? on the speakers and no longer, you know, in the, just in the living rooms. And the same way with Bollywood, same way with, you know, we're having belly dance. So that's the first time that people will get to experience Farima in a very Iranian pop style. And then on Saturday, uh, and, and, you know, Farima, you should talk about the work that you do. Uh, you know, she's coming, she's presenting uh, four different styles. Right. And the last time we spoke, Farima, and please feel free to change this, because, you know, as much as I change things on you, you change things for me as well. <laughs> right. So as far yeah, as I know, on Saturday, <laughs> on, on Saturday, Farima and her team are going to be presenting Afghani, Uzbek, Azerbaijani and Persian uh, culture. So Farima, take it on from here. Well, um, I like how she she was right on on the pop music. It's you know it's so interesting because um, when oftentimes so many of the Iranian community you know people in the Iranian community always tell me they're like you know we love your dance and we love how you explain the traditions and the culture. But what if you just do like what we do in parties sometimes you know like we miss that we want to be in a party and uh, a lot of people that i told them that you know we're doing pop music they they all wanted to come friday because they just want to be as if they're in a home party in iran and they just want to do party music so um i know a lot of people love that and they miss that they're just like oh we want a party we want a party like you know do more dances like that so they're very happy that they feel like they're actually in a home party and and you know being together um, but I think and on Saturday, um, I wanted to this time I wanted to kind of represent because oftentimes we basically represent different dances from Iran, but um, but our our collective is really um, even our dancers like mosaic they're all from different parts of the of the world they're not all Iranians I, I you know I only actually have one Iranian dancer so it, they're all from different parts and um, what we like to do is to portray their home country um, their dance uh, and, and their culture as well and not just focus on Iran I mean if we look back into the Persian Empire the entire Central Asia and parts of um, Africa parts of you know uh, uh, East Asia, they were part of the Persian Empire. So these all have this traditional dances that have a, a taste of Persian art and Persian dance in it. So we're talking about the countries such as Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Armenia, Greece, even Bulgaria, um, all of these were part of the Persian empires. And if you look at them, you'll see all the elements of Persian dance in them. So this time I wanted to say, because it is this blend of culture um we haven't really brought in any dances from afghanistan or from uh from uzbekistan or from azerbaijan it was always been just persian so i figured that you know it's nice for people to see that hey these other little countries were at some, at some point were part of the persian empire and they also now have their own representation their own country and their own style we need to represent that as well and that's what our collective does um, and it's be nice to represent that at Mosaic. Um, yeah. And Danny, that's the reason I, I also approached you for I, your specific. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. This is actually a brilliant idea. Block party secret dance lives. Because <laughs> I have, you know, I, you know, I've always had my own secret dance lives. It comes yes. out, you know, during certain times. I'll tell you that late nights at certain parties, but, uh, Everybody has a secret dance life, uh, yeah. but whether it's cultural or, you know, and they're personal. And I think yeah, yeah. this is a great kickoff to the, the weekend, you know. Yes. Um, so basically, I want to ask, uh, just tell us what we what can people have, uh, you know, think and have in store for this weekend? Uh, once again, it's mosaicamerica.org. Check out the website, sign up for the, uh, the festival. But can you give us a glimpse of what uh, Friday, Saturday might look like to some people. Oh, absolutely. And you kind of already got a glimpse, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so, so, um, um, 
what does it what do they want to say uh, it's a free festival that's the first thing i want to say right because here here's the thing about how it's different from like an arts presentation right you, you know you we cannot be telling we cannot be building community if you're going to tell them hey you can only come to our festival if you can afford 50 dollars mm -hmm. you know and so which is why the last time we had it for six hours on one day and then we said, you know what, we should make this available on more days, right? And so this time it's a two-day festival. It's on Friday and on Saturday. So Friday is from six to 10. So uh, it's gonna be at the, it is presented in partnership with the School of Arts and Culture at Mexican Heritage Plaza, which is also the venue, right? And Mexican Heritage Plaza is, is a gorgeous, gorgeous, elastic sort of space that kind of, accommodates for all and any and all kinds of programming, right? So on Friday, of course, now you've heard about this block party that we're doing. It's gonna be outdoor stage on the plaza. And then there is an indoor outdoor sort of space, which is going to have uh, vendors, um, arts and crafts vendors, there's uh, mindfulness uh, vendors, there's meditative vendors. And then there's artists on the mindfulness. We have a whole section called the healing garden, which is all about mindfulness. And, you know, it also, also a little sobering for all of us to kind of consider that in the last three years, you know, so many of us have lost so much, right? And even if the, a, a few of us, the only thing that we've lost is our lifestyle or our sense of sanity, that is still a loss that connects all of us, right? Because for the first time, I think, you know, especially in this generation, this is a kind of sort of a unifying factor, the loss, right? And we felt like all of us have so much healing to do. So we have actually, uh, the lead of our healing garden is somebody who used to run the Conscious San Jose Festival, um, Tarane Sarafzadeh. And she has put together a beautiful program of mindfulness, meditative uh, practices, soundscapes, uh, right, bio-tuning, all the way from bio-tuning to music, right, um, th that is healing and meditative in nature. Uh, we're going to have Tai Chi uh, as well. So there's going to be workshops also on that Friday. There's going to be a, in the theater, in the auditorium, there's going to be a 13 musicians. We're going to have, we've invited Chamber Music, Silicon Valley to be a part of the finale to their festival is actually part of our festival and has been curated by Dr. Ray Furuta. And he has come up with this beautiful concept of uh, uh, marrying classical with jazz. It's actually called uh, the passion of, uh, of Coltrane and Bach, right? And so that itself there is, is like a beautiful confluence of two different cultures, right? Um, and then the dance party is a dance party and we have food trucks. There's going to be, let me see if I remember all of them, right? There's going to be definitely Korean barbecue, there's Indian curry, there is um, a dessert truck, uh, treat pot, there is uh, definitely some Mexican uh, uh, food, there's uh, burgers, and, and there's one more I bet I forget. Uh, so there's food trucks. So, you know, the way I look at it, there's culture being represented through history and tradition this culture of the present, the, the sheer fact that all of us are coming together to experience this. And then this culture of the, the future, right? What are we going to do with all of this, right? So that is always the past, present, and future sort of kind of come together at, at this event on Friday. And Saturday is what I call a more of a cultural immersion where we'll have even more programming, right? It starts at, the day starts at two o'clock and we have 18 workshops. Right, uh, all including the you know mindfulness meditative workshops as well as the arts and crafts workshops. Like for example, we have uh, Eric Hazlett, who is a some of you might recognize the name. He is a, a radio host, um, uh, and I'm forgetting uh, exactly what his channel. I think 91.5, but don't quote me on that. Uh, he is actually doing something with making music with recycled uh, materials, right? So, and then we have. Um, Farima again, that's the sixth time that you will be presenting. <laughs> She's actually going to share a very beautiful sacred whirling workshop, right? Um, yes. and, and you know, all of this is free, right? So we have the schedule up on our website for the workshops. Uh, and then the plaza stage will be activated uh, at, from five to 10 uh, in the evening. And that will be like a nonstop participative uh, dance along 
uh, to music of different kinds. And then the auditorium is going to have jazz again, presented by San Jose Jazz. There's also going to be dancing from San Jose Dance Co, International Performing Arts of America and New Ballet. And then we have a very special artist who kind of spends her time in, in Silicon Valley and Brazil called Rosangela Silvestri. And she's going to be talking about her evocative movement technique. Uh, so six stages um, across two days, uh, eight plus four, 10, eight plus four is 12 hours of programming across six stages. So that's what you can expect. <laughs> and you know what the beauty of this is, this is not, we've not gotten artists from elsewhere. This, these are our neighbors, right? Who practice this art. So when you look at this stage and you see Farima, don't look at her from, as somebody from Iran. This is your neighbor, right? And this is what she does day in, day out, right? Um, and so that's the beauty. That's why I love doing what I do because this is a celebration of all of us. Right, and then and then the next year, this, you know, so we did this last year, and you know what? Let me let me brag a little bit. We got this. Um, the city of San Jose and the Office of Cultural Affairs were kind enough to kind of recognize, um, you know, uh, the the impact that we we're making, and we actually are getting. Uh, we were we were selected for the award for uh, the Cornerstone Award for Creative Impact. Beautiful, amazing. Yes. And you know, and the, the, the reason I want to say this in front of the community is because this is this was possible because of all of us, right? All of us getting together, Farima working with me to create this program, right? And the and the and the whole the audience that has shown a readiness for this kind of programming, right? And then, then the city kind of waking up to the fact that hey, this is about all of us, and then kind of recognizing that, you know, it means so much. And this is a festival of all of us, for all of us, by all of us, right? Which is why intercultural and co-creation is so, so important for our programming. And that's what you can expect. We'd love to see you. And what I, I just want to point out what I love, that point that I love very much is that we're all, just, we're all from here. We're all literally from Silicon Valley. I mean, we didn't have to go anywhere outside of that. And as a, and just to imagine that how amazing, how beautiful it is that all these artists are here. Like Priya said, they're, they're next to us. And maybe we don't know our next door neighbor is the same artist that's going to be in the festival. But how amazing and beautiful is that, that we're all here in this in this city. Um, and we're doing this. We didn't have we didn't have to bring anybody from another country that we're here. Yeah, so it's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, so it's not international. Yeah, it is national. Yeah, <laughs> in that sense, you know, we're all here. And you know, thank you both for uh, sharing that, especially uh, with so much passion. Because uh, and the important point that you made right there is, um, and I think sometimes it gets lost being from here because we're we're kind of uh, lucky to have so many different ethnicities and cultures intermingling or not even uh, noticing each other until we stop to observe the different, you know, buildings and communities that have different typography and languages listed, or, you know, and smells. And it's like, mm -hmm. sometimes we need Mosaic America, uh, organizations like Mosaic America to congregate and say, hey, stop, look, it's your neighbors doing yeah. this. Uh, and be very excited and proud, you know? Uh, and I think I'm, I'm so excited for this weekend. And I, I'm excited that you uh, gassed up Farima, who's going to be performing six times. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and the, the sounds like the coffee. I need my coffee yeah, yeah. on that day. Now you're going to need your coffee. Uh, you know, and it, coffee. there's going to be hours and dozens of uh, different uh, groups and people all sharing. I counted, I counted today. It's 121 artist vendor you know if you count everybody the 121 groups and, and then multiplied you. by like farima is going to probably come with eight people i have a, a, another troop that's coming with 17 people so 121 times 10 right <laughs> that's that and that is us you know yeah. 1200 people presenting to 2000 you know more of us so it's it's going to be gorgeous it's our it's already a party mm -hmm. with the people there Presented. Exactly. Yes. It's, yeah. already, it's going to be more powerful with the people who are going to bear witness. And I think the most important thing that we uh, were asking is an invitation to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not a uh, 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 or a nonprofit organizer like Priya, or uh, you know a dance ethnologist like Rima, 
Um, even if you don't dance, maybe you don't sing, but you appreciate people, culture, community. Uh, I think this is the invitation that we want. Just yeah. do, for you to come, yes. enjoy, bear witness, and share that, right? Yeah, just come um, with the family, have a beautiful day, eat some food, just find new friends. It's, it's, it's been a beautiful weekend. Yes. I, I knew last year was a little warm, but I think the, the weather is going to be beautiful this weekend. So Yeah, so and you know, two to five, the programming is mostly indoors, right? And both and both on Friday and Saturday, Friday starts at six and Saturday starts at five. And that's the reason we kind of moved it. Um, yeah. Um, so any um, last words would you like if, to share with us before we go? Um, Oh, we are always looking for volunteers. So if you, and even for this festival, right? If you'd love to be part of this award-winning team, <laughs> um, thanks to you, uh, we have won this award. But if you'd like to be part of this team, you know, for any amount of time, daily, weekly, monthly, you know, whatever it is, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and the way to find us is musicamerica.org. The way, you know, we'd love for you to register just because the times we live in, we might want to give you updates about COVID guidelines, maybe. We'd love for you to register. And for the registration link for that is tinyurl.com slash Mosaic Festival 2022. Or just go to our website, mosaicamerica.org. Come. Come. And uh, any last words or shout outs for Eva? Well, thank you all so much for um, everything everybody does. And Peria, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for having us today. Um, I, I just hope that we continue these beautiful um, gatherings. We continue spread um, our art and um, we, need, we need art these days. The, the only way to survive these days is we need more art. Um, we need more, more multicultural art. So, um, Thank you. Keep it up. And we hope to that people can come and enjoy some nice music and dance and have fun. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> we are, as you know, a library institution, we are natural allies and supporters of what you do um, because we stack our shelves with culture and we want mm -hmm. people to discover. Uh, and in one way, people, once again, one more time, you can discover a lot of it this weekend. Uh, and also uh, throughout the year. So remember, it's just not this one time. Mosaic America and organizations such as Mosaic America are always uh, sharing and always willing to have people like yourselves participate. So I hope you go this weekend, hope you sign up uh, and hope you reach out so uh, yes. that we can continue doing this. Um, Priya. Danny, thank you so much. And yes, thank Danny, you to thank Santa you. Clara City Library for having us. Of course, uh, this was the delight, even though I'm a little tired. I don't I didn't need caffeine. I had a riveting <laughs> discussion with y'all. You guys stimulated my mind and I, I want to do my secret dance later out into the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I hope to see you all soon in the flesh. So uh, thank you so much. Time. Yeah. So everybody, I hope you're doing well. Uh, hope to see you at the library sometime soon. But if anything, have a good evening and we'll catch you at the festival. Take care. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you.